Hear ye, hear Good evening. Before we start this little proceeding, several people have inquired as to whether or not our good friend Ben Franklin will be with us tonight. Unfortunately, I must advise that Dr. Franklin is currently indisposed. It seems that two or three young female members of this organization <laughs> spirited the good doctor away from his accommodation this afternoon, <laughs> took him on a tour of South Austin night spot, oh. and introduced the good doctor to a Texas concoction which I believe is called a margarita. Oh. <laughs> now my good friend Franklin has a strong constitution if you will forgive the fun. But after seven frozen, where about gold, margaritas, <laughs> it was thought the better part of politics for Dr. Franklin to retire and clear his mind for tomorrow's morning. So if Dr. Franklin will not be with us tonight. We will soldier on with your permission. <laughs> we understand that there's been a great deal of confusion caused by the Citizens United case which held that corporations are persons, just like me and you. We are here to dispel any misunderstanding there may be about that case. We also understand that some people are scratching their heads about the big bank bailout, which we will speak to also. But why don't we ask our good friend Thomas Jefferson what he says about banks and corporations. Mr. Jefferson, what say you about corporations being held to be the same as people? If I'd been asked that question at the time of the Bill Bryson this round, I would have been quite amused. Quite amused because my stand was clear against stock jobbers, monocrats, and the corporate elite. As I said in one of my letters, which you may recall, I hope we crush in its birth the aristocracy of money corporations which dare to challenge our government and defy the laws of our country. As you know, Adams, those damnable corporations were one of my worst fears. That's why Washington and I decided not to locate the Capitol in New York. We wanted Hamilton and the corporate aristocrats as far away from Congress as they could be. Now, Thomas, don't be shy. Why don't you tell these good folks how you really felt about those New York bureaucrats? <laughs> sure I understand one thing, though, Mr. Adams, is it, do I understand correctly that the Supreme Court of the United States has ruled that corporations can spend as much money as they wish on elections in the name of free speech? Now, Jefferson, be careful there. What you must understand is, is that free speech is no longer free. <laughs> <laughs> Those poor corporations pay millions to buy elections. <laughs> <laughs> but do I understand it correctly that the Supreme Court of the United States has ruled that you cannot buy one vote, but that it's okay to, in effect, buy an entire election? Precisely, Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you see, under our modern free economy, it is much more cost efficient to buy an entire election than it is to buy one vote at a time. <laughs> Thomas. That's the way it works. Why? Yes, that's our modern free economy speaking to us, of course. Yeah. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm dumbfounded as well. It's dumbfounded. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about those banks? Yeah, oh, the banks. You know very well what I think of banks. Bank, banking establishments are a greater danger than standing armies. Banks suck the life blood out of good, ordinary people. Thomas had such a high regard for banks that he borrowed as much money as he could during his lifetime <laughs> and did not pay them back until after he died. <laughs> but let me ask you again, Mr. Adams, if I understand correctly about this bailout. As I understand it, banks lost billions of dollars of the people's money and then the Treasury saved the banks and let the people go to hell? Oh, yes, Thomas, don't you see? Why, if the banks had failed, the bank officers would have lost their Christmas bonuses. Aww. That would have been a great tragedy indeed. <laughs> a great tragedy. But uh, as I understand it, 
the, what about the people who lost their homes and their investments? Thomas, I swear, you don't know a thing about the banking business in America. Why, we must save the captains of our great financial institutions first. Otherwise, they will not be able to use our money to accumulate great wealth. <laughs> <laughs> really, Thomas, we must send you to Adam Smith so he can teach you about the invisible hand. <laughs> now, before, now, 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 before we can go into further, anything further on the subject, you clearly do not understand. How did you ask your friend Yankee Doodle what he says about those things? All right. Keep it up, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Find the money in the banks and with the most we have. Please let them spend 
their money so they can have their say. <laughs> 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 They will only spend their money on candidates who are good and true. Oh, okay. Boo. <laughs> Those who believe in America and the red, white, and blue. <laughs> Please give us this case and we'll call away. <laughs> Yes, my colors are full of the people, just like me. Thank you. 